Good evening, people watching Miss 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you a verse of scripture out of... I can find it. Luke 21, 26. This is actually talking about the second... in the tri This is talking about the tribulation. Okay? Which you think you're seeing things now? <laughs> this is a precursor to what's going to happen. It's going to be a lot, lot, lot worse in the tribulation. This is why it's important to get saved now. Luke 21, 26 says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's what's going to happen here. And it's coming very, very soon. The rapture is first, then the second coming. The rapture, the tribulation, the great tribulation, time of Jacob's trouble, and then the second coming of Christ. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, and future was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. That's how we're saved, why we're saved, and why we're kept saved through his death, burial, and resurrection. His blood that was shed for us. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which again, it's going to happen at any time. And you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, teach you, and change you if you let him. Now, if you look at a live feed of the Wailing Wall, it's packed. It is utterly packed there. It goes in circles. It just sometimes is packed, sometimes it's not. What these people are praying for, they're not praying to, the, to Jesus. They're praying for their Messiah to come back, which is the Antichrist. That's what they're praying for. They're about to get that sooner rather than later. It's a lot happening right now. It's a lot sp happening spiritually. People are being attacked. People are being um, whatever. Especially, I'm talking the born-again believers. This is why I know that we are this close to the rapture. Because we're about to get out of here. So, you know, Satan wants to put that last jab into you before, he, uh, before you take off, so to speak. Putin orders changes to Russia's nuclear doctrine. Now, <laughs> I had to write this stuff down. So, you got that going on with him. You got, remember the 20,000 tons of ammonium nitrate that was told to be moved? I did a video on this a few weeks ago. Well, now it's in the English Channel near the UK. That's not a coincidence. You got that going on. You got all kinds of stuff going on. You got uh, derailments going on. You got uh, lawlessness is off the charts right now. And again, this is nothing compared to what's coming. What we're seeing is a precursor to this. We're not in the tribulation. Please do not say that, okay? Because it really irritates me. <laughs> because people do not know how to read the word and get discernment. It, we are not in the tribulation. If we were in the tribulation, I wouldn't be talking to you right now because I'd be with the Lord. Just saying. And a lot of you probably be running for shelter somewhere. That's how bad it would be. So Putin orders changes to nuclear doctrine. This is key right here because when he did this, it's awfully funny that at the same time that article come out, it comes out that 20,000 tons of ammonium nitrate is now on the English Channel. 
Russia should update its nuclear doctrine to clearly define circumstances that could prompt Moscow to launch a nuclear strike. Putin told a meeting of the National Security Council today. He also suggested an expanded list of threats that would include reliable information of a major airstrike being launched against Russia. The list of criteria that would justify Russia's use of its nuclear deterrent should be expanded in the updated version of the doctrine, he told them in the meeting. Aggression against Russia is a... is. Aggression against Russia by any non-nuclear state supported by a nuclear power. Ukraine, who's not nuclear, but the United States is nuclear, in other words. Hmm. Syria is also not nuclear. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, they are. I think they are. No, they're not. I don't think so. But anyway, you get the gist. In other words... Aggression against, aggression against Russia by any non-nuclear state supported by a nuclear power should be treated as their joint attack. So with him changing this, that means that, you know, we always were a sitting duck for a nuclear uh, attack. Yeah, well, guess what? Now you're really a sitting duck for a nuclear attack. Basically, what he's saying here, now don't forget, Syria, Iran, North Korea, China, they're all in cahoots together. So they're all allies together. What's left? Hmm. Israel and the United States. So Moscow would also consider resorting to a nuclear response if it gets reliable information about a massive missile or airstrike launched by another state against Russia or its closest ally, Belarus, according to Putin. The weapons used in the enemy's potential strike could include anything from ballistic or cruise missiles to strategic aircraft and drones, he stated. We reserve the right to use nuclear weapons in case of aggression against Russia and Belarus, the Russian president said, adding that the principle had already been coordinated with Minsk. Nuclear weapons can be used if an enemy poses a critical threat to either state sovereignty through the use of conventional weapons, he explained. Putin did not elaborate on when changes to Russia's nuclear doc doctrine would take place. He's not going to say when it's going to take place. He probably did it today and no one knows. But them. Senior Russian officials, including Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryavkov and Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov, have been discussing potential changes to the doctrine in recent months. In late August, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that the document was being reviewed. The Russian leader has long demonstrated a rather reserved position on the issue of nuclear weapons. So back in June, he expressed hope that it will never come to a nuclear exchange between Moscow and the West. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. He's actually right. He don't want that because he knows what's going to happen. No one's going to win from this. Moscow has no reasons to even think about using nuclear weapons, he said at the time, speaking at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. Later that month, the president also stated that Russia did not need to launch a preemptive nuclear strike since the enemy is guaranteed to be destroyed in a retaliatory strike. Huh. Really now? He did not, however, rule out changes to the doctrine at the time. At the time, he did not. So, <laughs> yeah, sure. What the U.S. is going to do is push them to do it. That This is what they're doing now. They're pushing them. They're pushing. They're pushing, pushing, pushing. To the point where it's going to come to uh, somebody's going to have to do a first strike. Yeah. I don't know. Israel might be in the middle of this. Just saying. Now, a massive Russian ship packed with explosive cargo. This is that 20 tons of ammonium nitrate that is on the English Channel right now. 
Yeah, the damaged Russian operated in the Ruby is carrying 20,000 tons of highly explosive ammonium nitrate and it's now close to the Kent coast and the English Channel. <laughs> As enormous damaged Russian cargo ship carrying 20 tons of highly explosive ammonium nitrate has anchored off the Kent coast just miles from London and seemingly heading for the English Channel. The MV Ruby, which was refused entry into the Baltic Sea by Danish authorities earlier this week. Remember, it was refused. They told them to move because it was close to a hospital weeks ago. And they said, no, this has got to go. Has traveled south and is now just a few miles from the English uh, coast. <sighs> yeah. So this is saying um, Scandinavian authorities, including Norway and Denmark, have refused access for the NV Ruby after it suffered damage, dangerous damage, to the head, to the hull and rudder on August 22nd. That's when I did a video on this. I did this in August. According to the Marine Tariff site, the uh, Russian ship is now heading for Malta. So, I'm going to link that in the description box. Um, let me see what's going on with Israel while I'm here. I'm looking on Telegram right now. It says, Hezbollah has been quiet. Dangerously quiet. So, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, vowed that Jerusalem will not stop his campaign against Hezbollah in Lebanon until a 60,000-plus evacuated Israelis can safely return to their homes in the north. This is what he said today. Now, Hezbollah said they're not going back there. So, this is going to be an issue here. A big issue. There's a lot of issues going on. You know what? I have to come up with a better name for what's going on besides unsustainable. This nation is in hospice. Let me put it like that. I'm serious. I, I am not joking about that at all. And what they're doing by passing these little government shutdown things and everything is just making it so, so what comfortable until the inevitability comes, which is inevitable. They're just kicking the can. There is no more road to kick the can down. This nation is about to face this nation and the world because God is about to come back and take millions of people home. Utter chaos is going to break out here. We're not seeing... This is nothing compared to what's coming. It's nothing. I will link all this in the description box. If Hezbollah decides to show his ugly head, I will come back and do another video. So far, they've been quiet. For now. So let's see what happens as the night progresses, shall we? I will see you back here... If God is willing, tomorrow, I will see you here or in the air, one of the two.